So before we get to the live telephone wires, how those are used for the Erev, Rabbi Shatkin has a model lesson. He's going to show us on this telephone pole and this, what do we call this Rabbi Shatkin? This is a resistor. Okay, take it away. So at the top of the telephone poles, there will often be a resistor holding one of the power lines and it will go like this, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, then this wire runs over the telephone pole. The telephone pole can be considered to be the lechi, and the wire will be the kanash al gabehem. And we have a good surah pesach No lechis will need to be installed. And this is the easiest way to make an eruv. There's another configuration that we'll often have, is that the, telephone, the, the power line is running on the side of the telephone pole, like this. So it doesn't run over the top of the telephone pole itself, but it does run over the top of this fiberglass pole, which is an extension, or could be considered an extension of this. And then, if it's running over the top, that would be considered to be al gabov of this. I like using this as a demo because when we get out to the poles, it's sometimes difficult to see when it's very high up. But this is one of the things that we'll be looking for, depending on what um, the, the halakha criterion for that particular area, which POSIC you're using. Some will only allow it when it runs like this, and it goes over the top of the pole. Some will even allow it when it runs like this. So which one won't they allow? Ah, so what they won't allow is as follows. Even those who are lenient, sometimes the wire will be put over here. Generally when the road is turning, so if the road turns, the wire has to turn, and they'll put it on the side. When this wire is on the side, it no longer is going over this extension. And therefore, you don't have to be very careful when using these types of Tzuras uh, pesachs to make sure that the wire that's on the top doesn't run like this or like this. So, the concept called Tachov. Usually in an area, the wire goes to the pole. Rabbi Shatkin is going to show us what happens when the wire goes through the pole. Rabbi Shatkin, take it away. So, Rabbi Tzvi Pesach Frank brings in one of his chuvas and perhaps the Chazanish as well, that when a wire not goes over the pole, but goes through the pole, that that's also considered to be al gabav, and that would be a valid form of Etzirah Pesach. Some Erevin will use this, and some will not. How it applies to utility poles is a little bit more challenging, so I'm gonna go up in the bucket and give you a close-up view of how we do Tachov when it comes to a citywide Erev. In this particular setup, we have our lechi here that comes up to this wire, and this wire is crossing the street to make a Tursa Pesach to the other side of the street. This lechi in some Erevin wouldn't be here because if you follow this wire and it continues, it attaches to this bolt. This bolt doesn't just screw into the pole, it actually goes through the pole and comes out on the other side. As you can see, the nut on the other side over here. That would be tachov, that this wire goes on top of the telephone pole, in and that it goes through the telephone pole and it is above the section of the pole that is below it. In this particular Eruv, they want it to be machmir, so we put a lechi going up to the bolt. And the bolt being an extension of the wire is considered to be underneath the wire. In this particular scenario, one of the interesting concerns that I had as a builder was do I bring the lechi up to the side and curve it to get underneath the wire, or do I bring it in front of this wire and come out? I chose to do it this way, because this way the lechi remains straighter, and it didn't run into an issue of pischei shamoy, which we will discuss perhaps in another video. And as well, this is more like a kippah, which you'll also learn about on Daf Yud Aleph, that when your lechi bends in towards the direction that the Tzuras Pesach is going, it is like a kippah. Another a couple of things, features that we have here are, instead of using zip ties, we always use aluminum ties, because zip ties have a tendency with time to disintegrate and the UV rays destroy them. And eventually what happens is your lefty moves and it's not underneath the wire anymore and the checkers don't always notice. And the other thing is having standoff pieces that can hold your lefty in place. Because the most critical part of the lefty is that it be under the wire at the top and that it be very secure at the top is really very essential to maintaining the kashos of your area. Another interesting debate regarding the installation of this particular material and this particular lachi. Um, if you look here, you'll notice that at the union of these two pieces of U-guard, there's 
two pieces in the back and a piece in the front. This was done because according to some opinions, if we overlap them like this, one piece is overlapping the other, that may be considered min hatsad. They wanted one to be on top of the other like this. In order to satisfy those poskim, when we installed this, we had one piece on top of the other, and we put a union piece over it and glued it together, and then placed our brackets. Other poskim allow this configuration, and depending on which post you're building for, that's how you would determine how you want to do your unions when you're using UGuard.